Welcome to this HP Technical Configuration Guide. In this TCG, we're discussing HP and Cisco OSPF interoperability. I'm going to explain and demonstrate the configuration of multi-area OSPF on HP and Cisco switches. This is the first part of two parts discussing the configuration of OSPF on HP Comware and Cisco devices. This first part discusses guidelines and commands. The second part is a practical demonstration of the configuration and testing of OSPF on HP Comware and Cisco devices. In this video, we have a topology consisting of four switches. Two switches, HP1 and HP2, which are running the Comware operating system, are going to be configured in Area 1. Two Cisco switches running Cisco iOS are going to be configured in Area 2. HP1 and Cisco 1 are going to be configured as ABRs or area border routers. They are also going to be configured in OSPF area 0. Once completed, we should have full connectivity in this network. A network mask of slash 24 is used throughout this topology. All ports in this topology are configured as routed ports. In other words, the IP addresses are configured directly on the interface. On Gigabit 102, on HP1, an IP address of 10.1.10.1 has been configured. On Cisco 1, Gigabit 102, an IP address of 10.1.10.2 has been configured, and so forth and so on. Both Comware and Cisco switches support routed ports. Support for routed ports depends on individual hardware. But the switches in this topology support routed ports and have been configured as such. The two HP switches are 5800 series switches running Comware version 520.11.21. The two Cisco switches are 3750s running version 12.255.se IP services iOS. The binary file used by Comware is this and Cisco is this. OSPF, or Open Shortest Path First, is an open standard link state routing protocol. For neighbors or peer relationships to form, neighbors or peers form adjacencies before route exchange. Link local multicast 224.005 is used to exchange hellos and to form the neighbor or peer relationships. In Comware, the term used is peers and in Cisco, neighbors. That is essentially a relationship between two OSPF routers that has reached the full state. In other words, the relationship is fully established and routes are exchanged between the routers. For peer or neighbor relationships to form, two routers have to be directly connected at layer 3 as they are using a link local multicast. Now as always, there are exceptions to the rule. So exceptions such as virtual links, and GRE tunnels are not covered in this TCG. In this TCG, we're assuming that two routers or two layer three switches are either directly connected or are connected via a layer two device, thus having direct connectivity at layer three. The routers have to be in the same subnet using the same mask. They need to be configured in the same area. Hello and dead intervals need to be configured the same. The same authentication method, either no authentication, clear text or MD5 authentication needs to be configured on both routers and the same authentication information such as the password need to be the same. In addition, the stub flag needs to be set on both sides. In other words, if the area is configured as a stub or totally stubby area, all the routers in that area need to have that configuration set. Otherwise, neighbor or peer relationships will not form. The same MTU needs to be configured on both sides, as well as the network type. So for example, broadcast or point to point. If peer relationships are not being formed between an HP and Cisco switch or router, ensure that the routers are directly connected and that these configuration options are the same on both sides. In OSPF, each router is uniquely identified by a router ID. So each router or switch 
in the OSPF domain needs to have a unique router ID. This is either configured statically, which is the recommended implementation, or is automatically chosen from one of the IP addresses configured on that router or switch. In both Comware and Cisco, the highest IP address of any physical interface is used as the router ID if no loopback is configured. When a loopback is configured, the highest IP address on any loopback interface will be chosen as the router ID. In Cisco, secondary IP addresses are ignored, but in Comware, sub IP addresses are used. The moral of the story is configure a unique router ID on each device. So in this example, to configure the router ID on Comware, type system view, OSPF, specify the process ID, in this case process ID 1. I'll talk more about process IDs in a moment. And then specify the router ID, in this case 1.1.1.1. On Cisco, type enable, conf t, enable IP routing, if IP routing has not previously been enabled. Configure OSPF with the process ID, in this case once again process ID 1, and then specify the router ID. Router IDs uniquely identify the routers in the OSPF domain. Router IDs need to be unique once again in the OSPF domain. To configure OSPF on an HP switch running the Comware operating system, in this example HP1, go to System View, Enable OSPF. If no process ID is selected, a default process ID of 1 is used. Multiple instances or processes of OSPF can be enabled on an HP Comware switch. Process numbers are locally significant and don't have to be the same on all routers. In this topology, I'm going to be consistent and set the process ID as 1. The default, once again, on Comware is to use process 1 when no process ID is specified. Configure the area, in this case, area 0, and then enable OSPF on interfaces within that area. In this example, 10.1.10.1.0.0.0.0 is used to explicitly specify that OSPF is enabled on this interface, gigabit 102. That could also be configured as follows, where an inverse mask is used to indicate that any interface within the 10.1.10.0 range should have OSPF enabled on it. And lastly, this command would enable OSPF on all interfaces. That's not valid in this case because interface gigabit 101 needs to be configured in area 1. To enable OSPF on gigabit 101, you would need to create the area, area 1, under the OSPF process. So you would type system view, OSPF, area 1, and then enable OSPF on that interface by using the network command, so an exact match on the interface IP address, or as an example, by using a wildcard stating that all interfaces in network 10.1.1.0 will have OSPF enabled on them and be configured as part of area one. To configure OSPF on HP2, you would simply change the network command and enable OSPF on interface with IP address 10.1.1.2 or use the same command stating that that interface which is in network 10.1.1.0 has OSPF enabled on it. Either of these commands could be used. The advantage of the first command is that it's very specific down to an individual interface and it prevents you inadvertently enabling OSPF on an interface where it shouldn't be enabled. To do something similar on Cisco, in this case Cisco 1, interface gigabit 102, you would type enable, conf t, enable IP routing. IP routing is not enabled by default on Cisco switches. It is enabled on Cisco routers by default. So in this case, because we're using a 3750 switch, we need to firstly enable IP routing and then specify the OSPF process by using the command router OSPF and a process number. Once again, the process number is locally significant 
and doesn't have to be the same on all routers. You then enable OSPF on the interface by using the network command and specifying in this example an exact IP address and then specifying the area that this interface should form part of. So interface with IP address 101102, in other words, this interface is configured with OSPF in area zero. OSPF is thus enabled on that interface. By the same token, it could be configured as follows by using the network command, but an inverse mask or wildcard mask, and lastly using the network command where OSPF is enabled on all interfaces. This is once again not valid in this example because gigabit 101 needs to be configured in area two. Cisco also has the option of configuring OSPF directly on an interface. So as an example, going onto interface gigabit 102, if it's a routed interface or going onto the SVI or switched virtual interface on a bridged or switched port. In this case, because it's a routed interface, I would go directly to the interface and then enable OSPF using process ID one, area zero on that interface. So in this example, either use the network command to explicitly specify an individual IP address or network command to specify a network or go onto the interface or SVI. On Cisco devices, you need to specify the area at the end of the network command or IP OSPF command. So be aware, on Comware, you configure OSPF, then the area, and then the network command. Whereas on Cisco, in OSPF, you configure the area as part of the network command. To enable OSPF on Cisco 1 and Cisco 2 in area 2, you'd once again type enable, conf t, enable IP routing. On Cisco 1, that's been done already, but you need to configure that on Cisco 2. Enable OSPF with a relevant process ID, once again can be different on different devices, and then enable OSPF on the interface. So this would be the command used on Cisco 1 or 10.1.2.2 on Cisco 2. You could also enable OSPF using the subnet rather than the individual IP address by using a wildcard mask. So here's the full configuration. For HP1, type system view, OSPF process number, router ID, and the router ID. Configure the OSPF process, in this case process one. Create area zero. Enable OSPF on interface gigabit 102 in area zero. Create area one. Enable OSPF on gigabit 101 in area one. On Cisco 1, type enable, conf t, enable IP routing, enable OSPF with process ID 1, specify the router ID, enable OSPF on gigabit 102 in area 0 and on gigabit 101 in area 2. On HP 2, type system view, specify the router ID, enable OSPF with process ID 1, Create area one. Enable OSPF on gigabit 101 in area one. On Cisco two, type enable, conf t. Enable IP routing. Enable OSPF with process ID one. Specify the router ID and enable OSPF on gigabit 101 in area one. In summary, process numbers are locally significant and don't have to be the same on all routers. Router IDs, need to be unique throughout the OSPF domain. That concludes part one. In part two, we'll continue the discussion with the configuration and testing of OSPF on HP Comware and Cisco switches.